Absolutely not. Um, I started at the very beginning just like everybody else does and I think the thing that's made me different in the bicycle touring world is that I started bicycle touring at a very young age and I've stuck with it for years and years and years. Um, for me it all started in 2001 with what I call a defining moment in my life. I had just graduated from high school and been accepted into a four-year university and I was going to major in film and television studies which was something that I was really looking forward to but at the at the age of 17 uh, I was also a little bit nervous about just the future in general I had kind of seen what so many of my friends and family members had done uh, go off to college, graduate, get a job, get married, buy a house, have kids, get a dog and then only after they've done all of that and retired then they're able to go off and do something you know travel the world or whatever and and sometimes they're too old uh, you know or sickly to do those things um, and so seeing that with so many different people it kind of frightened me a little bit and I didn't want to have to wait until I was 50 or 60 years old in order to travel the world so I decided that I wanted to do some of that at least as soon as I possibly could and that's when I decided that before I was going to go off to college I wanted to do something big challenging and memorable I didn't know what that thing was right away or at first um, but I knew that before I started college I, I was going to do something big and that's when one of my friends who was on my soccer team at the time suggested that I run across the length of California kind of like Forrest Gump did in the movie Forrest Gump that was released in I think 1994 um, I was a huge Forrest Gump fan in school when I was in high school and all of my friends knew that so that's kind of where that idea came from. It was, it was a joke that my friend was just suggesting that I run from Oregon to Mexico down the California coastline and for him it was a joke but I actually started thinking about it and thinking hmm maybe I, maybe I could do something like that. I mean that would certainly be big, challenging and memorable. Um, so. I started to think about running from Oregon to Mexico uh, but after I conducted a three-day test run near my home I decided that running was probably not uh, the best way to do that big challenging and memorable thing that I wanted to do I was so sore I, I ran so I ran for three days I ran a marathon every single day for three days in a row and by the end of the third day I couldn't walk my legs were just dead. Um, so that's what made me realize that maybe running from Oregon to Mexico over a short two-month summer holiday was probably not going to be the best option. But luckily uh, my uncle Tom had just returned from a two-month long bicycle tour in Ireland and he was able to sit down and tell, with me, tell me that uh, that instead of running maybe I should ride my bike and, and this was really an aha moment for me my uncle uh, was the only person I knew at the time that had ever done a bicycle tour and so he was able to tell me that while running I'd have to have a car or something to follow along me you know alongside me to carry my water and food and all that kind of stuff uh, that on a bicycle I could travel by myself and carry everything that I'd need with me for for the trip on my bicycle saving me a large amount of money and also preventing someone else from going along it, you know there wasn't this need for somebody else to go along with me on the trip so I took my uncle's idea and and ran with it and before I started my first year of college I I mounted my father's dusty old mountain bike which had been sitting in the garage unused for years I didn't have a bike of my own um, and I slowly pedaled my way more than a thousand miles uh, 1600 kilometers or so from Oregon to Mexico down the California coastline I didn't know a thing about bike touring at the time I made a ton of mistakes along the way but I muscled my way through it I, uh, which is something I don't think everybody could do I think it being 17 years old and fairly naive I was able to just kind of pain painfully push my way through some of these moments and 30 days after I left I reached the Mexican border and to make a long story short the trip totally changed my life. Uh, 
I thought that I thought that when I reached the Mexican border that this would be the end of my bicycle touring experience, you know, that I would never go bicycle touring again. I'd go off to college, get a job and do what I thought I was going to do at that time. But reaching Mexico was really just the beginning for me. Uh, I became hooked on bicycle touring. I'd sit in my college classes and be thinking about all these incredible experiences, the people I met, the scenery I had seen on that first bicycle tour, and I knew that I wanted to do more of it. Um, so for the following four summers, all through college, I, instead of like doing what my classmates did, which was like get internships and low paying jobs, I would save up my money during the school year. I worked two jobs during university, and then I would go off during the summers and ride my bike through some foreign place. Um, and I, during college, I rode my bike across the United States six times, different routes across the United States. And um, after I graduated from college, I just kept going. I went further and further away from home, um, started going to foreign countries and traveling by bike all around the world. And so that first bike tour down the California coastline was really the defining moment for me because it taught me, it taught me a lot about myself and the world in which we live. And it taught me a lot, really, about the fundamental basics of bicycle touring. It taught me that riding an old bicycle that's been sitting in the garage for years is not a good idea. Uh, it taught me how to carry all the belongings that you need for a bike tour on your bicycle. Uh, it taught me that if you carry too much stuff, that cycling becomes difficult. And, and so I learned a lot of the, the essential bicycle touring basics during that first bike tour, or even the first couple bike tours. More importantly, though, my bicycle touring experiences during my college years taught me that the world isn't nearly as scary as everyone makes it out to be. Um, I was incredibly shy during high school and college, but bicycle touring really opened up the world to me and, and taught me, made me realize that, that I didn't have to be afraid of other people. Um, I think I've, I've learned a lot about setting goals from bicycle touring. I've done some amazing things and seen others do amazing things through their bicycle tours. Uh, and I think more importantly, I, I've, I've realized that bicy it, with bicycle touring, it doesn't really matter where you're from, how old you are, how much money you have, that if you set a goal for yourself and you push, you know, you aim for that goal, uh, you are capable of, of succeeding. So. Um, those are some of the things that I learned from that first bicycle tour. And, and I should also mention that during the first bike tours that I was doing, I also met a number of other people who were just getting started with bicycle touring. And they were, like myself, kind of learning these things as they went along. I'd, I'd land in campgrounds each night and mingle with fellow bike tourists. And we'd sit around the campfire for hours each night and talking about all the problems that we were having. Uh, talk about which gear was best for long distance bicycle touring. We'd talk about how we were planning different routes and stuff. And, and so it, it really made me see that other people were running into the same problems and experiencing the same things that I was while I was out there on the road. But let me fast forward to 2007 because I had been bicycle touring for more than six years at this point. I'd graduated from college and one night, all of a sudden, completely out of the blue, I got a phone call from one of my old college roommates. He was my roommate for one semester during my freshman year. And um, all, like I said, we're, it's a year now after I've graduated from college and he calls me up haven't talked to him in a long time and he says hey Darren I know that you were trying to get me to go on a bike tour all throughout college and I never did it but now I want to do it and and so all of a sudden he decides he wants to finally go on a bike tour um, and he calls the only person he knows that has ever done it me so uh, we talk for hours on the phone that night and I get really excited uh, thinking about helping him you know plan and prepare for this big bike tour that he has in mind and with that phone call in mind, I started BicycleTouringPro.com uh, with the intention of simply helping my old college roommate plan and prepare for his first bike tour. And at the time, I, you know, I, when you build a website, it's, it goes out to the whole world. 
and I didn't think at the time that anybody else would care to read what I had to say or anything. Um, but my how-to articles, product reviews, and stories from the road like all became extremely popular very, very quickly. And before I knew it, I had thousands of people contacting me each and every month asking for help with their own bike tours. I think one of the things that attracted people to Bicycle Touring Pro since the very beginning is the fact that all of the information needed for bicycle touring success is in one location. People can visit this one website and find out everything that they need to know about traveling by bicycle. And as a result of this, I think Bicycle Touring Pro has not only helped people save a lot of time, money, and effort, but has, has more importantly helped thousands of people conduct their own bicycle touring adventures. And really, that's what it's all about. Well, that's, that's actually a really good question and probably a good place to start when we start talking about what is bicycle touring and why would you want to do it. Uh, bicycle touring is a unique activity because, because it attracts people from all walks of life. Like you can be rich or poor or young or old, a man or woman, uh, an experienced cyclist or someone who's never ridden a bike before, and you can enjoy the benefits of bicycle touring. Uh, you can choose to ride short or long distances. Uh, some people, you know, ride just near where they live, and other people ride their bikes all the way around the world. Uh, you can choose to sleep in campgrounds or fancy hotels. Uh, you can travel alone, go with friends, or, or go cycling with a large group of people. There's so many different ways to do it, and, and that's really what makes bicycle touring so awesome, I think. Um, as for why people decide to go bicycle touring in the first place, I think people go bicycle touring because they want to do something new, they want to experience places they've never been to before, they want to learn about new places of the world, they want to try new foods or new drinks, they want to meet new people. Uh, I've personally found bicycle touring a great way to meet new people and make new friends. Uh, some people go bicycle touring in order to meet people and other people go bicycle touring to get some time to themselves. Maybe they work a job where, you know, they're constantly on the phone or rushing between coworkers or something. And, and so some people go bicycle touring just simply to get away from it all um, and have some time to themselves. Some people go bicycle touring in order to uh, ponder their own existence, challenge their way of thinking perhaps. Some people go bicycle touring because they want to find new ways of doing things, seeing the world, approaching life. They want to, you know, experience other cultures. Uh, a lot of people go bicycle touring just to get into nature, to, you know, to ride their bike uh, through a forest or um, through a desert. Um, some people go bicycle touring because they want to share a unique experience with their traveling partner, maybe a friend or a family member, a loved one. Um, bicycle touring is a great way to really get to know another individual and come home with memorable stories that you'll, you'll remember for the rest of your life. Um, bicycle touring is an awesome way to get physically uh, fit. A lot of people go bicycle touring to lose weight, tone muscle, or train for larger or longer bike rides, etc. Um, people go bicycle touring because it is physically challenging. I knew that I know when I first started bicycle touring, that was one of the reasons that attract one of the things that attracted me so much was that I just wanted the physical challenge. Bicycle touring is mentally challenging as well, and and that brings a lot of people to it. Um, Bicycle touring is also just a great holiday. Uh, if you just want to get away and kind of recoup and rethink your life, bicycle touring can be a great way to do that. So all of those things and more are why people go bicycle touring. I've probably missed a dozen other reasons that why people go bicycle touring, but those are just some of the ones off the top of my head. Um, and I think that's what's so great about bicycle travel is that you get to decide what your motivating factors are and and to put those motivating factors into the tour that you decide to plan for yourself. Yeah, believe it or not, there are actually a number of different types of bicycle touring and bicycle tours. However, the main branches of the activity can be broken down into three major categories. Guided bicycle touring, self-guided bicycle touring, and self-supported bicycle touring. 
And understanding the difference between these three major types of bicycle tours is really important because the type of bike you ride, the gear that you use, and the strategies for success that you use once you get out on the road will all vary depending on the type of bicycle tour that you're conducting. So let me talk briefly about each of these three types of bike tours and kind of explain why these three bike tours are different. So guided bicycle touring is a type of bicycle tour in which you pay to be escorted along a pre-designed path or route by an experienced bicycle touring guide or tour company. And your belongings like your food, clothing, toiletries, etc are carried for you in a vehicle that meets you at various checkpoints along your route. So guided bicycle tours usually range in size from about 2 to 20 or more people, with tour participants coming from a large number of countries all around the world. And the support and personnel vary from tour and, and tour company, but usually there's, there's one professional tour guide that escorts you along your route during the day. He's going to ride with you and your group throughout the day on his or her bicycle, while a second tour guide drives a support van or vehicle of some kind carrying your luggage and, and maybe some extra bicycles or something like that. So a lot of these tours have just one or two guides that escort you along your route, although larger bicycle tours may have three, four, or even more tour guides uh, working with you to escort you uh, each and every day. Um, one of the great things about bi uh, guided bike tours is that you don't have to do all the planning and preparation for the tour like you do with some of these other types of bike tours I'll talk about in just a moment. You just pick the location of the world that you want to go to, let the tour company uh, sort out all the details about where you'll be riding, what kind of bike you'll be using, what, what you'll be eating, where you'll be staying, all that kind of stuff is taken care of for you. You just show up and enjoy the experience. Um, most tour companies, in addition to doing all that, they'll also provide you with like a comprehensive packing list, so what you, you know, clothing or gear that you might need to bring for the tour. They'll give you route and map uh, details. They'll give you uh, some kind of information packet, usually containing details on the sites that you can expect to see and experience along the way. Um, they'll, you know, tell you about cultural highlights and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think one of the great things about guided bicycle touring is that if you enjoy traveling with a group, you like meeting new people, um, maybe you have a preference for riding with an experienced bicycle touring guide, maybe you just want the, you know, so the comfort of knowing that if something goes wrong, somebody is there to help you, um, maybe you even just like having a structured daily schedule. If that sounds like you, then a guided bicycle tour is probably uh, a good fit. And and I think one of the other great things about guided bicycle tours is that when you have a professional guide escorting you along your route, they can uh, point out places of interest, they can organize activities or events off the bike that you might want to participate in, and like I mentioned before, they're there to help you in the event of a mechanical, mental, or physical breakdown. So, so that's all really great. Um, my website at gobicycletouring.com is essentially a database of guided bicycle tours, guided and self-guided, which I'll talk about in a moment, guided and self-guided bicycle tours all around the planet. So you go to GoBicycleTouring.com, you pick this part of the world that you want to go bicycle touring in, um, you contact that company and they will sort out all the details. So um, if that sounds like the type of bike tour you're interested in, uh, GoBicycleTouring.com is a great place to start. A self-guided bicycle tour is different from a guided bicycle tour. Um, it's very similar in that a tour company is sorting out all the details for you. So the route has been sorted, your, your hotel or campground stays have been sorted. Uh, a lot of times the food, uh, all of your meals, or sometimes at least most of them, um, are dealt with on a self-guided bicycle tour. The difference is that on a self-guided bicycle tour, you don't have a guide to escort you along your route every single day. The details have been sorted for you, but then you're on your own to create your own schedule, to uh, navigate your route each and every day, to reach ultimately to reach your destination on time. So while, the, while a tour company has sorted out all the details, um, you're free 
to move about on the tour as you like. And, and I should say, you can pick your own touring partners. So while a guided bicycle tour is usually a group of strangers coming together and riding uh, together on a particular route, a self-guided bicycle tour can be you riding by yourself, it can be you with your wife or husband, it can be you with your boyfriend or girlfriend, or or just simply a group of friends riding together. So a self-guided bike tour, you, you have more control over who you ride with, what your schedule is going to be like, and where you go. Guided bicycle touring is probably the most expensive type of bicycle touring because you're paying for a company to do a lot of the work for you and you have to pay for the guides to come along with you on the tour. Self-guided bicycle touring is a lot cheaper than guided bicycle touring because there is no guide to escort you along the route. The company has gone out of their way to sort out all the details for the tour for you. Um, but once you get on the road, you're essentially on your own and the price justifies that. So. Um, uh, yeah, so if you're on a budget and you would like the guided bicycle touring experience, check out self-guided bicycle tours. Once again, there's a ton of them at GoBicycleTouring.com and um, you might be able to find an affordable uh, self-guided bicycle tour in the location that you've been dreaming about. Finally, there's the self-supported bicycle tour, which is the type of bicycle tour that requires you to travel alone without a guide, not necessarily alone, but without a guide, and you have to carry all the clothing, tools, and gear that you will need to survive on your bicycle for days, weeks, months, or years on end. And this is the type of bicycle touring that is commonly referred to as traditional bicycle touring or fully loaded bicycle touring. So you may have heard it called one of those two things in, uh, before. Um, well, 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 like all your food, route details, lodging, etc. are taken care of for you on both guided and self-guided bicycle tours, self-supported bicycle tours require you to figure out all these details on your own, either in, in advance of your tour or once you get out on the road. And, and because of this, self-guided bicycle touring is by far the least expensive means of traveling by bike. Um, but it also takes the most work and so it's not necessarily for everyone. Um, a lot of people who get started in bicycle touring um, and want to do self-supported bicycle tours start out by first doing a guided or self-guided bicycle tour so that they have a guide and a group of people to ride with and once they get a taste for it then they move into the self-supported bicycle touring world. Uh, not everybody does that. I mean, I leaped into self-supported bike touring when I was 17. That was my first trip. I just jumped on my bike, didn't know what I was doing, and figured out all the details. Um, so that's it. Those are the three main types of bicycle tours. Guided, where, a, where you have a company and a guide who escorts you along your route. Self-guided, where the, the details have been sorted for you, but there is no guide to escort you and self-supported, where you are on your own completely and you have to figure out where you're going to go, what you're going to eat, where you're going to sleep, and all that kind of stuff completely on your own. Well, the, the truth is almost any type of bicycle can be used for bicycle touring, but the longer your bicycle tour, the more important it becomes to use a proper touring bicycle. There, there are actually bicycles built specifically for long distance bicycle touring and they're called touring bicycles and there are a number of different types of touring bicycles. Uh, each type of touring bicycle has been built for a specific type of bicycle touring. While many touring bicycles look similar to the road or mountain bike models that you're probably used to, there are actually a number of small differences that make touring bicycles better equipped for long distance bike rides. For example, um, touring bicycles have wider tires than road bikes and thinner tires than mountain bikes. And this enables touring bicycles to be pedaled easily on roads, which is where most bicycle tours take place. Um, but they can also handle a fair amount of off-road riding. Um, traditional touring bicycles can go on, you know, on dirt roads or something, but they aren't going to be able to tackle uh, you know, steep drop-offs or anything like that like you'd be able to do on a mountain bike. Um, touring bikes are also made of steel. The, the frames of the bicycles are usually made of steel, 
And uh, the reason for this is because uh, touring bikes need to be stronger than um, other types of like road bikes, for example, because they're carrying the extra weight of not just your body, but all the gear and stuff that you're going to be carrying. Steel is also a comfortable metal because it bends a little bit when you um, ride and, and the bending motion in the steel frame absorbs some of the shock from the road, and it, uh, which makes the bicycle much more comfortable when you're riding on it for long periods of time. Um, touring bicycles also have lower gears than road bicycles tend to have, and this makes it easier for you to pedal with large amounts of gear on your bicycle and to climb steep hills and stuff like that. Uh, touring bicycle makers also know that you're going to be spending a long time in the saddle each day on a bike tour, and so they design the bikes to be more comfortable on your back, butt, hands, and neck. Uh, there's a lot of little twists and features on touring bikes that you'll see to make the bicycle more comfortable for you when you're riding. And also, um, and probably most importantly, uh, touring bikes are built to support racks on the front and rear of the bicycle. And racks are metal cages of sorts that allow you to carry up to four panniers, or these are like backpack sized bags on, the, on your bicycle at a time. And in these bags you can store all the gear that you're going to need for your tour. So th those are some of the features that you find on touring bicycles, bikes built specifically for bicycle touring. And a lot of those features just simply aren't available on other types of bikes. So um, yeah, that's one of the one of the really the biggest questions that people uh, ask me when they're getting started with bicycle touring is what type of bike should I ride? And, and like I said before, any type of bike could be used on a shorter tour, but once your tour gets up around the, oh, I want to say one to two week mark, then it becomes more important to have uh, a proper touring bicycle. Um, again, I, I should mention, my book, The Essential Guide to Touring Bicycles, is written specifically for people who are totally new to bicycle touring and are looking for a bike to ride during their bicycle tours. Um, it, it, the Essential Guide to Touring Bicycles is essentially a buyer's guide. It contains a bunch of information that you need to know before you go out and buy a touring bicycle. And in the back of the book is a database of all the touring bicycles in the world. Um, and this database is there essentially to help you find the best touring bicycle uh, for your particular type of bike tour that you're planning. So if you're in the market for a touring bicycle, check out the Essential Guide to Touring Bicycles. Um, it's available at touringbicyclebook.com. That's actually a, another good question. And if you knew nothing about bicycle touring, you might think that bicycle travelers carry their belongings, like their tools, clothing, camping gear, food, etc., in a backpack that they carry on their back. I know that's what I thought when I first started bicycle touring. But, but carrying your gear in a backpack is not the typical approach. And the reason that you don't want to carry your things in a backpack is because using a backpack for days on end is going to make you hot, sweaty, and sore. And, and getting hot, sweaty, and sore on a, on a long distance bike tour is what you want to avoid. Uh, if you try to use a backpack, I bet your tour will come to an end a whole lot sooner um, than if you had used one of these other strategies that I'm going to tell you about right now. So instead of using a backpack, there are two main ways that bicycle travelers carry their gear and thus eliminate any excess pressure on their back, neck, or body. So they either use a set of panniers, or also pronounced panniers, um, Panniers are backpack-sized bags that attach to the front and rear racks of your bicycle. They're shaped kind of like a small backpack, and a standard touring bicycle can carry up to four of these panniers on the bike at any one time. The other strategy is to use a trailer, uh, a one- or two-wheeled metal cart that's pulled behind your bicycle. And so, th so those are really the two main ways that people carry their gear, panniers and trailers. Now, which is the best way to do it? Well, that's a, that's a debatable question, and, and, and honestly, the answer to that question depends on the type of bike tour that you're going to be 
doing. Uh, I will mention this hundreds of times on Bicycle Train Pro, but the type of bike that you use and the way that you carry your gear, panniers, trailers, etc., is going to depend on the bike tour that you're, you're conducting. For the most part, however, most people conducting bicycle tours will use a set of panniers, either two panniers carried on the rear rack or four panniers, two on the back and two on the front of the bicycle. So I conducted a survey at Bicycle Train Pro where I surveyed like 10,000 people who had been on bike tours and I asked them uh, which they had used on their trips, panniers, a trailer, or a backpack. And of those I surveyed, 92% said that they used a set of panniers on their bicycle when they were, when they were touring. Only 7% said that they used a trailer and 1% used a backpack. So I don't know if those numbers are, are entirely 100% accurate, but I think based even just on my own experience and seeing other bicycle tourists out on the road, I can tell you that the majority of people are using a set of panniers um, with, with a small percentage using a trailer. Um, and there are advantages and disadvantages to both, um, but for most people I think a, a rear rack and a set of panniers is what they need to at least get started. Yeah, well, the basic equipment needed for bicycle touring is really rather simple. Um, the basics to get started are a bicycle, some, some type of bike. Uh, you need a way of carrying your gear, whether it be in a trailer or a set of panniers. Um, you might need camping equipment if you choose to camp such as a tent, sleeping bag, sleeping mat, etc. Um, if you choose to cook your own food, you might uh, want to get a stove and the appropriate fuel, plus any utensils or lighters and stuff like that that you might need. Um, you're going to need some basic bike tools like a multi-tool, a patch kit, a spare tube, and a bike pump. Uh, you'll need some basic clothing, clothes to ride in during the day and also clothes to change into once you get off your bike. Um, there's a few safety items that you might consider purchasing, like a helmet and lights. Um, the modern bicycle traveler is now carrying a number of technological devices, such as a cell or smartphone, camera, GPS, etc. Some people, for some people, all of those devices are combined into one device. Um, food and water is an obvious one that you might need to carry on your trip and any personal items that you might choose to bring along. So that's really it. Um, and there are detailed packing lists that I've created. I've created dozens of these lists um, that you might, things that you might choose to bring on any given type of bicycle tour. The, the, your packing list will vary from tour to tour. But that is essentially it. A bicycle, a way to carry your gear, camping equipment, stove, bike tools, clothing, safety gear, technological devices, food and water, and anything uh, personal that you might want to choose to bring along. Well, you know, the, the truth is I'm not a bicycle mechanic and, and I don't think most of the people that go bicycle touring are. Um, I, even after years and years of bicycle touring, I, I can admit to not enjoying cleaning or fixing up my bicycle. I don't enjoy that aspect of bicycle touring, but it is an essential part of uh, traveling by bike. You need to know how to do those things. So before you go off on your first bike tour, you should have a basic understanding of your bike. You need to be able to install a new tire, replace a flat tube with a new one. You need to know how to patch a bike tube with a patch kit. Uh, you need to know how to adjust your front and rear brakes. You probably need to know how to install new brake pads. You need to know how to adjust the height and position of both your seat post, saddle, and handlebars. Um, you need to know how to install your front and rear racks if you're using a set of racks and panniers. Uh, you need to know how to attach your trailer if you're going to use a trailer. You need to know how to clean your bike chain, that's important. Um, you also need to know how to adjust your front and rear derailleurs 
and you probably should know how to install and remove your pedals. Those are really the basics that you need to know. There are more complicated repairs and adjustments that you might need to make on a bicycle tour, but those few things that I just listed are, are the essentials that you shouldn't really be going off on any type of bicycle tour uh, by yourself unless you know how to do those things. There's a bunch of um, books, of course, that teach you how to do these basic repairs. And uh, the one that I always recommend to people is called The Bicycling Guide to Complete Bicycle Maintenance and Repair. Um, that's a good one. Uh, it has some really good pictures that demonstrate how these repairs and adjustments are done. So if you don't know how to make those uh, basic repairs and adjustments to your bike, that's the book I'd recommend. Again, it's called The Bicycling Guide to Complete Bicycle Maintenance and Repair. You can get it at Amazon.com or any major website. Yeah, there are actually a number of different bicycle touring locations all around the world. Um, but I always tell people to start out right where they are. Um, I think the best place to start bicycle touring is where you live. Kind of explore the area around your home. Get comfortable with the bicycle touring basics and then start going out to locations further and further away. I think that's a really comfortable and smart way to get into the bicycle touring world. Um, if you're interested in further, you know, destinations further away from home, I've already mentioned GoBicycleTouring.com, which uh, is a list of guided and self-guided bicycle tours all, all around the world. And a lot of these bike tours operate on pre-established bicycle touring routes or popular bicycle touring routes. So um, you might want to check that website out just simply to see where some of the most popular destinations in the world are for bicycle touring. That's, that's a great place to start. Also, there's guidebooks that have been written about popular bike touring destinations. Um, for example, there's like a, a book um, about bicycle touring the Pacific Coast of the United States or bicycle touring in Ireland or bicycle touring uh, on New Zealand's South Island or something like that. So there are, there are books that have been written like this all around the world, and these books usually contain maps, uh, recommendations on where to eat and, and sleep, um, and various side trips that you can take to see things off the bike. Um, those types of uh, bicycle touring guidebooks can be found at bicycletouringbooks.com. So check that website out. Um, and go to the guidebook section um, to check out the, the guidebooks there. Um, the, the three most popular uh, information sources for bicycle train routes all around the world, however, probably come from the Adventure Cycling Association, which is the first one. They operate uh, a route network all throughout the United States and small amounts of Canada. Um, so go to Google and type in Adventure Cycling Route Network, and you'll see uh, this really big uh, network of bicycle, bicycle touring routes all across the United States. Um, another good place to look is the National Cycling Charity. Um, they have some great maps and stuff uh, for those of you who are looking to go bicycle touring in the United Kingdom. And uh, for those in Europe, you want to look for uh, Eurovelo. This is, the, the website is eurovelo.org. Um, and this is the uh, European Cycle Route Network. So there's a, there are a number of routes all across Europe um, and through dozens of countries, um, long distance cycling routes. You can choose to do small or small parts of these routes or do them all. But um, those are the three ones. So the Adventure Cycling Route Network, the National Cycling Charity, and Eurovelo, the European Cycle Route Network. So check those out. As for like where you should go on your bicycle tour, that's a little bit trickier. I mean, people choose to go bicycle touring for different reasons, and, and because of this, they choose the destination for their bicycle tour in different ways. I mean, people choose to 
oftentimes go to the easiest location. Some people just want an easy bike tour. Some people want to go to the hardest possible location that they can think of. Uh, some people go bicycle touring in places where friends or family members have recommended. Um, maybe they saw something in a book or a magazine and that made them want to go bicycle touring there. That's another popular thing to do. Uh, people see places in films or documentaries and then they want to go bicycle touring in those same areas. Um, a lot of people, history buffs, go bicycle touring through places that are of historical uh, significance. A lot of people go to places that are of personal significance. Maybe uh, their family, you know, their grandmother was born in Ireland and they want to go back to Ireland and visit the place where their grandmother was born or something. That's another uh, popular thing that people do. Um, a lot of people want to go bicycle touring to get away from everybody they know and and see what it's like to live in you know live and travel in other parts of the world. So uh, they pick their destinations based on that that end goal. Um, a lot of people want to go bicycle touring in places that are safe, of course, which is. Uh, understandable, but a lot of people want to go to places that are dangerous or potentially dangerous or falsely dangerous. Um, uh, some people want to go bicycle touring in cities, other people want to be out in the countryside where they don't see people at all. Um, another thing to keep in mind when you're picking your destination is how many bicycle shops are there in the area um, because the type of bike that you ride and the gear that you use is going to depend on where you choose to go traveling. So um, these are all things that you can kind of keep in mind while you're picking a destination. Um, but when people, when people ask me where should I go on my bike tour, I'm always a little hesitant to answer that because while there are these popular bicycle train destinations, some of which I've mentioned, the you know Adventure Cycling Route Network and the Eurovelo routes in Europe and stuff, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go bicycle touring in one of those locations. For me, I think what's so great about bicycle touring is that you can go anywhere uh, on a bicycle tour. You can, and, and, and I think it's important to go bicycle touring in a place that you are personally interested in. And the reason I say this is because uh, I think that when you choose a location that you're invested in, that when your bicycle tour does become difficult, and it frequently does, I mean riding a bike for days on end is not necessarily always easy. Um, you know, so when you hit that first big hill or it starts to rain or you're a little hungry and, and all of that is happening to you at the same time potentially even, uh, if you're not in a part of the world that you're excited about, then the temptation to like quit and go home is, is really, really high. But when you're, when you're invested in the place that you've chosen to go bicycle touring, you've been wanting to go here for years and, and you're finally there. When, when that small inconvenience of like the wind blowing or the rain coming down, when that happens, it's not that big of a deal because you're living your dream. And, and so for me, when, when you pick a destination for your bike tour, I think that has got to be where you start. Like think about the place that you most want to go in the world and then see if there's a route or something through that area uh, rather than starting with is there a route in this area and maybe I should go there. Um, so that's, that's my recommendation is pick a part of the world that you are most passionate about and, and let that be your, the, your springboard for the, for the rest of your bicycle tour. Yeah, I think in, in almost all instances, yes, uh, bicycle touring is an activity that almost anybody can do. Young people, old people, poor people, rich people, uh, it, it really doesn't matter all that much. As long as you can ride a bike of some kind, you can probably go bicycle touring. Um, I, I've seen babies on bike tours, I've seen dogs on bike tours, I've seen 95-year-old uh, men on bike tours, so it, it really doesn't matter. Um, in 2004, I went on a bike tour with a group of blind bikers. These were children between the ages of 10 and 15 who were either 
completely or partially blind. And they were, we were, well, I was riding with them, but we were riding bicycles, uh, tandem bicycles, where they had a seeing person, uh, somebody who could see, riding the bicycle up front, and the blind child was riding in the back. Most of these kids had never ridden a bicycle before, and they were able to ride hundreds of miles uh, by themselves in this way. And so for a lot of those kids, it was a really rewarding experience. And, and I think that's really what I like most about bicycle touring and about running my website at BicycleTouringPro.com is that I get to see people from all around the world, from all walks of life, uh, conducting different types of bicycle tours and coming home from those experiences having succeeded. Uh, and I, I think that for me is, is what keeps me going. It's really, really rewarding to have helped people uh, who started with just a, an idea, a dream of riding their bike to some you know, far off place and then hearing from them days, weeks, months later saying, Darren, I did it. I completed my bike tour. Um, and it was awesome. And it was, I'm going to do another one. So yeah, that's, uh, for me, that's really what it's all about. And, and for me, I, th I think that's why I've spent so much time and effort on my bicycle train exploits. Uh, I really do enjoy helping people plan, prepare, and execute the bicycle tour of their dreams. And, and I think one of the things that separates me from so many others in the bicycle touring world is that I am doing my own bike tours while I'm helping others. I, I'm not just a guy that went on a bike tour 20 years ago and now I answer a few emails from people who want to know how to do the same thing. I mean, I'm not just sitting in a cubicle and writing articles about bicycle touring with no experience. I am actually living the life of a full-blown bicycle traveler. Uh, I've got years of on-the-road bicycle touring experience. I've written for magazines and newspapers about bicycle touring for years on end. And most importantly, I've helped people, thousands of people, conduct their own bicycle tours. And, and for me, that's, that's really what it's all about. The plan, I guess, is to keep doing what I've been doing. Um, I'm planning to continue traveling the world by bike each and every year. Um, I am blogging about my adventures on BicycleTrainPro.com and sharing stories and photos and videos from the road while I travel. Uh, while I'm doing this, I'm also writing about the lessons I've learned along the way. I'm experimenting with new products, I'm testing new technologies, and I'm constantly revamping existing bicycle train strategies, playing around with the way things were done in the past and trying something new. So that's kind of where I'm going, I guess, in the future uh, with both my own personal travels and with BicycleTourningPro.com. I've really made a commitment to myself and to others to dedicate the rest of my life to serving bicycle tourists all over the world. I want to share the joy of bike travel with not only this generation, but the next and the next and the next. So uh, that is my future. Um, and I am really looking forward to it. Well, that wraps up our interview with bicycle touring pro Darren Elf. If you haven't done so already, be sure to follow Bicycle Touring Pro on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest for even more free updates and information.